Hi, and welcome to the summary of the robotics project from the seminar Automation and Visualization of Laboratory Processes and Data at Technical University of Munich. My name is Elisabeth von der Esch and I will present to you the robots that our students built in our seminar. The robots that you can see here are entirely made of Lego and we will show you how they were built and you will see them in action as well. Since we could not provide an environment for the students to build their robots and it was likely that they could not meet the entire time to build the robot and some of our students were also not in Munich so that they could not meet their teammates, we provided uh, some guidance for building robots in times of social distancing. So this is the document that we gave them. Each submission consisted of three parts. So the first part is the video about the robot that they have to produce. Then they have to, of course, build the robot and then also provide the code. Then we also added a part where a digital design is made of the robot. So this was special for the students that could not um, participate in, in person with their, um, with their partner. So this was for those who could not meet at all so that one person could get the robot kit, an assembled physical robot, and the second person could just use the digital designer to make a virtual version of the robot. The first design that we can see here is a column chromatography robot. So column chromatography is used in synthetic chemistry to clean up your reaction products. So usually you just want one target molecule, but you have a lot of byproducts and they can be separated by their retention times in the column. So as you can see here, the liquid that is transferred through the column is collected. And um, after the first vessel is filled, the robot has to rotate and put the second vessel into place so that um, the column can be opened again. This is the second part of a chromatography robot built by a second group and they wanted to do the refill mechanism. As you can see, the, there are two sensors and an aluminium ball serves as sort of indicator of the fill level of the column. When the second sensor is reached, the um, sensor knows that the column needs to be shut off and that the pumping mechanism needs to start. This is what we can see here. So this is a Lego peristaltic pump that this group built and it serves to refill the column as you can see here. So basically the aluminium ball rises with the level of um, fill that the column has and once it reaches the second sensor the chromatography can start anew. This is a shaking robot. So we basically have a robotic arm that shakes our mixture of reagents. And here you can see a pipetting robot. So it has two different positions that it can pipette from. This is a more elaborate model where you have eight syringes that can simultaneously pipette. So what you see here is the the robot pipetting into a 96 well plate. So 96 well plates can be used, for example, to prepare a PCR reaction. So PCR means polymerase chain reaction. And you may know that from the context of coronavirus testing. So that is basically the reaction that you use to identify if a person um, has the virus or not. So this was a big inspiration for our students. As you can see, um, this robot does the job, but the accuracy could still be improved. This is due to uh, the use of low precision parts for a high precision task. Here you see another alternative for um, a pipetting robot that prepares a PCR reaction. We have different wells that it can pipette from. The blue well would be the, reaction, the reagents and the other well would be for cleaning. Here you can see the syringe um, getting the liquid and then distributing it into the well plate. Here's a close up. This is the result. So basically what um, you can see is that the wells are filled evenly. What you see here is the robot going into the yellow wells in front which have the template DNA and by mixing the reagents and the template DNA 
you can then perform the PCR reaction. As you can see, when the robot moves forward, um, in the back, the back wells, they are green as we are in this example mixing blue and, uh, and yellow color. This robot is an alternative to the robotic arm that we saw before. It also uses an ultrasonic sensor to uh, orientate uh, itself within a room so it can find obstacles. And this is how this robot knows where to deposit the flask that it just picked up. Here you can see a more elaborate uh, robot that our students produced. So basically it's a pipette tip sorting device and it has a lot of different movements. So it has a linear movement, an up-down movement, and also the insertion of the comb. So these three movements needed to be com uh, combined in order to uh, have a successful pipette sorting. Um, as you can see here, the robot works relatively well. Lastly, we have another pipetting robot. And here the goal was to do a dilution series. And this group uh, took special care to really film every single angle that they could find and to explain the code for each sensor that was used. So they're using a touch sensor, a color sensor. They are doing uh, tower rotations and they are doing an up-down movement um, of the syringe um, as well as um, the insertion of the color into the uh, into the collection vessels. We would like to thank all students for participating in our course Automation and Visualization of Laboratory Processes and Data at Technical University of Munich. And thank you for watching.